Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got your boy Bert, and you know you're rolling with Lanny, the Dividend Diplomat brothers, and we can't wait to talk to you about two dividend stocks potentially to buy right now. Before we get started though, smash that subscribe button everybody. Give us a thumbs up, so close to 10K everybody. <sighs> Thank you. The video's getting ready soon. We're prepping it up, so get hyped, everybody. But Lanny, are we entering the ring today? What is about to happen for all the viewers out there? We listen up, Mean Bird. We got two dividend stocks right now. We're gonna put in the battle, Jack. But truthfully, we heard some comments. We specifically, I think, what was a video or two ago? They really wanted to put two cereals in the ring. They really wanted to put two snack branded companies yeah. in the dividend pit. Yeah. So we're gonna enter the ring here, Hulk. We're gonna talk through this and we're gonna run these two companies head to head at yeah, WrestleMania. Up, For all the dividend maniacs out there, we're gonna take our vitamins, eat our cereal here and look at two dividend stocks. Those two stocks right now, and you probably already know it. If you're the commenter, you already know what we're about to talk about. You know it's coming. You specifically. You know it, brother. We're looking at Kellogg's, ticker symbol K, and General Mills, ticker symbol G-I-S. Yeah, these companies are going to be brought to you in any cereal, any grocery store, any convenience store. You can find these companies anywhere, and chances are, look in your pantry, you're going to find one of their products in there. There's a good chance. Good chance you walk down those aisles, you're going to see they're in the snack, cereal, baking aisle, you'll find something from them. And, you know, these are two stocks that really do well during pandemic time periods. Yeah, and that's why I'm excited to take a look at them. We love consumer staples. A lot of dividend love growth it. investors do for that reason. Bird loves it. Yeah, good times and bad times. People still need to okay eat. Okay times. Some, yeah, average times, yeah. sub-average, <laughs> above times. average, <laughs> one through ten. It could yeah, be anywhere. It could anywhere on the scale. Yeah, but there you always need to eat and do that. So you, even during the pandemic, people still had to stock up on their foods, which is why we love these companies and specifically Kellogg's yeah, and yeah. General Mills. Bert was putting ketchup on you know Nature Valley bars. I was. You got to do what you got to do, right? Dinner. You yeah. Know, he was brewing coffee right through Cheerios. You're mix mixing your Cocoa Puffs there with your Fruit Loops. You're dumping them all together, right? And you get all varieties. Yeah, and don't forget the marshmallows you sprinkled on top from your Lucky Charms. I leave the marshmallows for last. Of course you do, because only animals don't do that. All right. So <clears throat> when we put them in the ring, we're going to focus on the Dividend Diplomat stock screener, which is three metrics. Bert hit him with the three. That price earnings ratio, less than the S&P 500. We also pull in an industry comparison too, which will be huge here huge. for this battle royale. Battle. We'll look at the, the dividend payout ratio where we look for uh, payout ratios less than 60%, although we do think that perfect payout ratio is 40 to 60%. Then we look at the dividend growth history. We'll look at how long a company has increased its dividend, how many consecutive years, and the five-year average dividend growth rate. And then last, we'll throw in a few bonus metrics here in this one. We're going to compare the stock prices for the companies and the dividend yields and just even some of the brands here because that's an important piece here. We'll take a look at some of the balance sheet as well, really take a look at what they're doing. Um, you know, again, these, this is going to be a nice little analysis. And hey, maybe one is a good stock for you to buy right now. Um, so we're going to get into the price to earnings ratio for Kellogg's and General Mills. We'll do like a one on one. Um, Bert, who do you want to, who side are you going to take here for this battle? Looks like I'm taking Kellogg's. He's, all right, he's taking Kellogg's. I'm taking General Mills GIS, which is in my wife's portfolio, actually. Do you own any of these? No, two I don't. So I'm going to see how these results are, and we'll see if one of them are going to be a buy for my portfolio we'll or my wife eating. next year. Dogs got to eat. Yeah, what's well, better than eat one of these two companies and their products? All right, so but the, the price to earnings ratio. Yeah, right. the, the prices are going to be as of Friday, July 23rd. Because that's right at the, we're recording the day after that on Saturday. So Kellogg's price, $63.43. Their forward average earnings per Yahoo Finance is $4.07. Gives you a P-E ratio of 15.58. What about General Mills? That's pretty good. I don't know. Let's see what GIS, General Mills, can stand up to this. Their stock price was $59.40. And analysts are currently projecting only $3.73 in earnings per share, which produces a PE just under 16 at 15.9. So I'd say they're pretty comparable here. Pretty close. Both are undervalued significantly compared to the market that is currently at a PE ratio that's closing in on 47X. Even the forward earnings, 
P ratio of the S&P 500 is in the low 20s. So both are undervalued in that regard. Yep, I would say so. But yeah, I mean, Kellogg's got them beat by a little bit on the P ratio, but not by a large margin. Now let's move into metric two and see if they start splitting up a little bit here. Kellogg's annual dividend is $2.32. Divide that by the earnings. That gives you a payout ratio of 57%. So a nice little check there across the metric. And yeah, nice little perfect payout ratio there. Let's see if General Mills can hang with uh, Kellogg's here. They currently pay an annual dividend, obviously over four quarters, but $2.04. And that dividend payout ratio is actually lower than Kellogg's lower than 57%, it's actually at 54.7%. So again, pretty comparable between the two companies. Not a lot of difference between their both pass our metric and both have that perfect dividend payout ratio. True that. Let's see if the history starts to split uh, these two companies up here. Mm. All right, Ooh. first look at the five-year oh. average dividend growth rate. Kellogg's five-year DGR is 2.75% and they have increased that dividend for 16 consecutive years. Lanny, talk to me about General not Mills. Not too bad, that's not too bad. So General Mills, you know, they were going through some growth. You know, they acquired Blue Bunny, I believe, was the big acquisition that they did. Yep, that bunny. That bunny. I want my bunny back. You know, if anybody knows Nicolas Cage, Con Air. <laughs> Everyone knows Nicolas Cage yeah. and Con Air. Exactly. So they were paying at 1.49 cents all the way back in mid-2017. They actually kept that dividend the same all the way through mid-pandemic. But I think due to the performance during the pandemic, plus their financials becoming in much better shape, you know, paying down long-term debt. They actually announced back resuming their dividend increases. So last year they actually increased finally for the first year in a row again. So they're back in the game. Back in the game. And that's because that long-term debt, you know, year over year, May 31st, 2020, May 31st, 2021, has actually gone down 1.2 billion. So they're cleaning up the balance sheet and trying to build it where they can have that sustainable growing dividend yep. going forward. I, so, would, I would say so. I mean, obviously as a new investor, potentially for me, I'd like to see a longer dividend increase streak. Just thinking through, I'd like to see longer streaks, something like along the Kellogg, but you have to at least respect management for doing the right thing and cleaning up that balance you sheet, get, even if they have no respect. Yeah, well, they might get some respect here. We'll what's, see at the end of the What's that video. dividend growth rate from Kellogg's? Oh, it's 2.75%. Wow, okay, well, it was 2.34% for General Mills, and that's Pre pretty comparable. I'll say this though, but that's also going pretty much only one increase in the last four years. Yeah, and unfortunately, neither of them are beating inflation at the moment though with yeah. that dividend growth rate. The dividend growth though that General Mills had last year did you know, beat inflation technically. All right, but now let's get into that. What dividend yield, that bonus metric, what does Kellogg currently sport for those investors so out there? So annual dividend of $2.32, divide that by the 63.43, so you have a dividend yield of 3.66%. Talk to us about General Mills, let's see. Pretty high, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's more, more than twice the market. More than twice the market. Um, General Mills falls shy of Kellogg's. They pay a $2.04 over that $59.40. They pay a dividend yield of only 3.43%. You say only, but it's also double the market as well. And again, it's only 20, 23 basis points here behind Kellogg. So I would say, like everything else except the number of consecutive year dividend increases, it's pretty comparable. The two companies are in line with each other, which would make sense because they are competitors in the same industry. Give a summary of Kellogg's stats at this point. All right, P ratio of 15.6, payout ratio of 57%, five-year average dividend growth rate of 2.75%. They've increased that dividend for 16 consecutive years and a dividend yield of 3.66. What about General Mills? PE ratio of 15.92, a payout ratio of 54.7, an average dividend growth rate of 2.34%, skewed because only one real year of dividend grows in the last four years, with the yield of 3.43%. So again, pretty comparable. Let's check quickly here. How have the stocks been performing? Yeah. Year-to-date, Kellogg's up 3.22%, but they are down over a 52-week period, they are down 7.64%. Wow, a stock that's down. I know, it's crazy, year, right? Another one. Absolutely wild. What about General Mills? Pretty similar here. They're pretty much at, they're flat this year. They're up 0.63%, and they're also down negative 7.5% from mm -hmm. July of 2020. 
It continues to shock me just how similar these two companies are outside yeah. of that dividend increase streak, which I bet you if General Wilson had that big acquisition, it would be right in line with Kellogg's. What are some of uh, you know Kellogg's brands? All right, let's talk through some of them. You got Frosted Flakes, Special K, Pop-Tarts. Lanny, what was your favorite Pop-Tart? I mean, if I had to go with one Pop-Tart, it'd be the brown sugar cinnamon. It's always a solid choice. The s'mores are great. Also love the traditional strawberry, blueberry kind, but it could be a traditional a sandwich list. out of the pop tarts. I do. What can I say? Then I'll like Nutrigrain here with some Fruit Loops, Frosted Mini Wheats, Cheez It. Who doesn't like Cheez It and Pringles? Pop and Pringles. Yeah. What about General Mills? General Mills, you guys know, you know, Betty Crocker, Bisquick, Pillsbury. You know, from a cereal side, they have Cheerios, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, they also own the Hagen Dazs brand. They got the Golly Ooh. Green Giant over there with my green beans. Um, they own Annie's, obviously Blue Buffalo, Fiber One, Progresso Soup. So you do see a little bit of a difference here when it comes to the products that they offer Deeper between Kellogg's. And, they do, yeah. Kellogg's gonna be much more in your pantry, the cereals, a lot of the snacking foods. But what I like seeing here about when you told me about General Mills, you got some desserts, you got some breakfast stuff, you got some baked goods, some, some ice cream, some, yeah, pet food, you got it's some could soup. Could be human food. Ice cream, yeah. Depends yeah. how good the pet food is. You know? Um, I, have, I wouldn't know, but... And the current ratio for General Mills is at 0.7. I would like that to be, obviously, over one times, but, you know, currently isn't, but they do have over 1.5 billion in cash and cash equivalents. Shocker, everybody. Same results here for Kellogg. Current ratio of... Points have in here and similar balance sheets again, once as well again, but they're in the consumer staple sector. So you are gonna see some debt. You're gonna see they have a lot of inventory, a lot of stuff built up here. So it does kind of make sense that their current ratio is not miles above one. So current ratio, not as liquid as you'd want a company to be, but pretty similar in the industry, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, you know, they've had some sales growth, General Mills. Um, they're up about 3% from 2020. Net income's up about 6% from 2020 and gross margin, which is you know big metric in the grocery um, arena is up from prior year. What about Kellogg's? Kellogg's also similar type results, just some slightly different numbers here. Quarter over quarter sales are up 5%, earnings per share growth nearly 6%. They're also seeing some improved operating profit as well. So both companies are trending in the right direction trending, together. Trending right. You know, I know people like to see revenue up, revenues mm -hmm. up, which is good. Earnings are up. You also want to see that too. Earnings are up. Hey, cinnamon Keep toast dropping down those up. payout ratios yeah. so you can jack up that dividend. Those 25th anniversary Pokemon packs and mm -hmm. the cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah. Bert, how many do you still have at home? Eh, just a few. Just a few. So, Bert, but, what do you think right now about Kellogg's and General Mills? I mean, independent. Which one are you buying, my man? I'd buy Kellogg's if I had to, not just because it's me, but the real difference here between the two the cheez -its. is yes, the Cheez Its for sure. But the <laughs> dividend growth does matter. They are increasing the Cheez Its that you are getting delivered to your portfolio every day. However, I just should say that with a caveat, I like both here too, because I also like General Mills' more diversified product line too. I think that does mean right, something. Right, I know when you mix your Progresso soup with Blue Bunny pet food, it's like a good combination. Again, haven't had the Blue Bunny pet food. You'll have to tell me here, Lanny. <laughs> what are you thinking? What do you like? <laughs> Tell you what, if you had a Lara bar, I don't know if I like those. <laughs> we have General Mills in my wife's account. I don't know if there's any buying opportunity. I see, um, you know, the price to earnings ratios are pretty similar. I'd like the yield to come up to outpace the dividend growth that we aren't seeing here. Because when you add the two, the factor just isn't, you know, barely over 6%. You know, if I, if I could see more dividend growth from a rate standpoint, or some price compression to increase the current yield to buy. You know, maybe Kellogg under 60, maybe General Mills under 57, 56. That's fair. So let us know everyone, what do you think of these two companies? Which one comes out on top? Do you like both? Do you wanna see another battle royale between these two at next year's WrestleMania? Let's, let's hear it, leave it in the comments below. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. I mean, again, we're on the road to 10K, the dividend stock mania battles. And, you know, we're almost there and we appreciate everything that you guys are doing for this channel. Yeah, thanks again, everybody. And let us know what other future battle royales you want to see too in other sectors. That was Bertha Hurt and this is Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over, Over and out. out.